Okay. This is a video, I've been threatening to do this video for a while. It's my uh, pocket dump video, right? Everyday carry. I saw a, a video last night, an uh, older guy, a carpenter's everyday carry, something like that. I think the guy's got like a, over a million subscribers, don't remember his name. I'd never seen him before. Good for him. I want to start this off by saying uh, everything you see me show you now or you know whatever I'm talking about this is not my advice for you I don't recommend you doing everything that I do the way I do it we're not the same person uh, and I put I didn't think about doing this until uh, I got in the car and I was driving over here and I thought let's just do it let's just take out what I have in my pockets now and it's pretty much what I carry every day with the exception of the phone which I'm shooting this video on right now um, can't show you that. There is a flashlight on the phone, which I use a lot, and a calculator and things like that. You know, the tip you got a smartphone, you know what it does for you. Uh, also, just a little bit of quick background. Uh, you know, I I bring it up a lot. It's not me bragging or anything like that. But I was in the Marine Corps, and I wasn't your average uh, Marine. You know, I went through infantry school, and then my first gig, which I it's what they gave me, uh, based upon my score. Apparently, I'm a smart guy. <laughs> so they literally said, and I have all those, all that paperwork. They're like, you could be a pilot, which is, if I can go back in time, I'd kick myself in the head and be like, dude, take advantage of that. Uh, I just wanted to go in the infantry. I had a lot of crazy notions uh, when I was young about what I wanted to do, and I didn't expect to be alive still at this age. And they said, well we're going to give you this and it's called security forces and I didn't recognize what that was at the time I, I it might have a different name today but it's basically uh, the I forget the exact numbers or how to say it correct it's something along the lines of the, the Navy takes like 10 percent or one tenth of the Marine Corps for deployment on naval installations with nuclear armaments so that means nuclear weapons or uh, uh, nuclear power there's a marine security detachment there to protect it uh, the marine corps is a branch of the navy uh department of the navy you know we like to call it the men's department <laughs> the reason i bring that up is for a solid year a little more probably i that's what i did and i was that's all we did was train so all we did was train. <clears throat> so I'm comfortable carrying a firearm, carrying a, a, a firearm uh, in. We're just going to start with this. It's going to turn a lot of people off. I don't always have this on me, um, but it is a, it's a, it's a semi-automatic. Uh, I do carry it in condition one. There's one in the pipe. The safety's on, and it's like this all the time. It'll be like this for months. And... Um, the problem with carrying a semi-auto in this configuration is you can't be lazy uh, about it because um, it uh, just the lint in your pockets will jam this thing up. So, which is part of the reason why you kind of need to carry it in condition one with the safety on because you can. Your safety's right here. With this firearm, uh, <clears throat> you can work the slide with the safety in place. It still won't go off, right? Uh, but you can pull this from your pocket, and your natural muscle memory, for me, I'm a, you shouldn't even consider this sort of thing if you haven't done this thousands of times. Uh, but I can do this here, and I'm ready to go. Boom. So... But the issue is, is you have to keep the thing clean. Right now, I'm, ex I'm experimenting with um, a new lubricant that a, a, a retired special ops guy turned me on to. It's called gun butter. So it's supposed to stay in there and work. Uh, what will happen is, is if you don't clean it regularly, I'm a little lazy. I should be cleaning it at least once a week. But what I do is I don't. <laughs> There's literally lint in here now I can see. What will happen is, is your first round will go off, but it won't cycle the next round. Uh, so, and I've done this many times, so I know. But what I'll do is, if you quickly, you lose an extra round there, but you can continue firing after that. It'll usually 
function properly after that. So there's that. Uh, I don't have a carry permit. Oh my god, oh my god. Uh, nobody knows you have a firearm unless you tell them, unless you're waving it around like a maniac or something. I've been in a lot of situations where uh, I've been in street fights with people, I've been jumped by people. Most of the time, it's an attempt. Somebody is sizing me up and I carry myself a certain way and have a look or I say something or don't say something with a look, which is usually better, and they tend to move on. All right, You, you don't want to be a target and I'm not going to be a, a hapless victim. My thought process on it is this, it's all the cliches. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Uh, the other thing would be better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6. That's just how I look at it. Uh, this is not something I would carry every day back in the day, but I live in Los Angeles, and this place is... There's shootings every day. I hear gunshots often, several times a week. With an earshot, that's pretty close. This is happening all the time. It doesn't make the big news. It doesn't even make the local news a lot of the time. It certainly doesn't make national news all the time. If, if, if these big cities, these metropolitan areas, if they actually reported on shootings happening in the city every day, that's all the news would be. For some of you, it seems that way already. Uh, look this up, FBI statistics, and this is old. It's probably way more than this now. I, it used to be it would read up to 3,000 times per day in the U.S. an armed citizen thwarts crime with their own firearm. That's like brandishing a firearm. You don't, if you are not a disciplined person, if you're a crazy person or a stupid person and jail is full of stupid people, um, or people that <laughs> were stupid at the moment <laughs> got caught, <laughs> uh, you don't want to be in a situation where there's some thugs or skateboard punks or and you're trying to intimidate them with a firearm. You're the kind of person, if you do that, you're the kind of person that should not own a firearm, you should not carry a firearm. You have to be a responsible person. So I'm just getting that out of the way right now. There's probably a bunch of people already turned this off. <laughs> What's next? Uh, I usually keep the phone in my back right pocket. I'm right-handed. And right next to that, I carry a fixed blade knife, right? Now, this knife is something that my buddy Dave turned me on to. He just sent me a picture yesterday. He broke his. It has this uh, attachment here, and it has screwdriver bits uh, in the handle. I use this all the time. I use it all the time in the van. I use this all the time. Uh, love it. It also has a bottle opener on it. So I have many different uh, fixed blades. This is the one I carry every day when I'm going to and from the shop. <laughs> I'm traveling in the van, but I have a lot of them. I have a few to choose from every morning. I, I posted a picture the other day. If it's still on the phone, I'll tag it here. I have this little tree thing. It's like a it's it's a vintage uh, little person uh, with a bowl on her head, and she's holding a bowl, and it's made out of vintage bottle caps. I bought it in Fairmount, Indiana, where uh, James Dean uh, was raised by his grandparents in a little thrift store in the basement. It's a James Dean Museum. And in the basement garage is like a flea market that's set up permanently there. And you can buy the stuff in there. And I bought it there. And so I have my keys and whatnot in there. And then there's like three knives sitting there uh, that I can choose from, depending on what I'm doing that day uh, and how I want to carry. So that's my second uh, everyday carry piece here. Uh, I always have two hankies on me. Uh, one to tie around my head if I need it. One to blow my nose. Uh, I've, I've got female friends, and we get in these deep conversations, and then they start revealing uh, these personal traumatic events, and inevitably they start crying, and if you can hand a woman a clean folded hanky, that's just a nice thing to do. <laughs> in this cargo pocket over here, there's actually a pencil in here, but I've always got my, uh, my cap. If I'm not wearing the cap, it goes in this pocket with its pencil. Pencil. You always want to write notes down, that sort of thing. But this here... I'm not a fan of those flat carpenter's pencils, even though I am a carpenter. They're not precise enough for me. I'm always working to within the millimeter, man. You know, I need to be able to get a nice fine point. But what I like about this, and I carry it here because before I started losing my hair, <laughs> 
and I wasn't wearing a hat all the time, I always had the pencil behind my ear. I didn't like the typical standard skinny pencils, right? And I found these. These are like kids' pencils. They're super fat. And what I like about this is, um, oh, hey, it's a bad situation. I put my hands here. But a really nice one to do is do, just cross your arms, maybe do this sort of thing when somebody's, because from here you can come out. I love, I always do this. I've been in these, believe it or not, I've been in these situations before. You might think I look a certain way where people wouldn't want to mess with me. But again, criminals are stupid. So uh, my thing is, is I'll just, hey man, don't want no trouble. And as I'm, I'm talking and I'm moving these a little bit and I'm putting one foot back and I'm getting myself in a fighting stance and I'm, I'm here, I'll glance, because I've had that happen. Another guy comes up next to you. I, I can tell you stories. It's crazy. But I'm still here. But from here, I can also do this, right? This thing here is no joke. If I run into a vampire, I'm, I'm good to go there too, right? Wouldn't stay through the heart. <laughs> Not everything I carry is a self-defense thing, right? It's just useful stuff. What else do I have on me? Well, I carry this big-ass wallet here. Now, I'm going to show this to you, and I've got stuff in here. I have a bit of a survivalist mentality. Uh, this wallet, I designed this wallet. I spent years, and I, I've ca I carried a couple cheap, you know, store-bought, off-the-shelf uh, trucker wallets over the years. Uh, I didn't like the design of any of them. And it got to a point where I had some business cards printed, and I wanted a, a, a special spot just for my uh, business cards. But I also needed a spot for my driver's license, bank cards, credit cards, that sort of thing. So I needed these two slots. I wanted them to be pointed up like this where the flap comes over because now nothing can fall out of this wallet. When you open one of these wallets and you see the slots this way, they, your stuff can still fall out of the wallet. It's, it's a dumb thing to do. So I came up with this. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. I've got a money pocket, right? I got my uh, Second Amendment money. I went to a gun show one time, and when they were giving you change, they made sure to give you $2 bills, and that's what they said. This is your Second Amendment money. Then I've got this one zipper pocket here, and inside the zipper pocket, it's a change thing, but there's also a leather keeper in there where you can keep extra keys. I got a little mustache comb. But one of the other things I keep in here is this. This is a well-sharpened, very thin knife. So no matter what happens, uh, somebody takes the weapon away from me or something, like if I'm going into a place or whatever, but I'm allowed to carry the wallet, I still have a little knife. This is not something that, uh, you, you, come on, man, come on. <laughs> but in a pinch, in a pinch. All right? But it's also just whatever you want to use a knife for, opening boxes, that sort of thing. That's mostly what I do uh, with this one, uh, as far as the blade goes. So I tuck that in there off to the side, uh, and then I was carrying this because I have a, this is an Allen key, because I have another knife that has a Tonto blade on it. It's made in China. I found it in a drawer in an old workshop that I, I ended up using, and uh, I found that around 93. Now, since 1993, we're talking 30 years ago, I can't tell you how many better knives I've gone through as far as losing them, misplacing them, whatever. And that old Tonto knife is still with me. But the uh, set screw for the blade loosens up on me a lot. So I got in the habit of carrying this uh, so I can always uh, firm that up a bit. All right, now, this is going to get interesting because I don't even know what, what all is in here. But right behind this pocket is one small, slim pocket. And I did this for registration. I used to ride a motorcycle every day. And I wanted a spot uh, to keep my registration insurance card, right? But I have other things in here. Let's just see. I honestly don't know everything that's in here. I take this every day. I put it in. I use the money. I use my bank cards. That's about it. Oh, I will show you this quickly. It's like a version of my old business card. There's no more of these around. Pretty cool. Die cut. Super expensive. <laughs> Uh, I had some information on the back there, which is not the same anymore. The phone number changed. I've been wanting to redo these, but I don't know how, and I don't know if it's worth it. You meet people now, I just tell them, look up Mike Z Design. You'll find me, Astro Van Tribe, whatever. You can get a hold of me. 
uh, but these were cool and that's the main thing I used to keep in here and now it's a lot of other people's cards and the, the plastic card for my supermarket and all that so back to this little pocket here well let's just dump it all out and then see what's in here because there's probably stuff in here that doesn't even need to be in here <laughs> there are screens in here I don't know what I would use these things for I have no idea uh, that's interesting. Okay. This is for the watch shop. Majestic timepiece. Mike. He, they've relocated. They are over on Larchmont Boulevard in Los Angeles. And he's got a couple of my vintage watches from my dad. One is a pocket watch. That's a Swiss made watch. Uh, Technos, I think. Uh, that was my great grandfather's. My father's grandfather. So can't lose that. What else is in here? This is my, uh, this will be my insurance. Proof of insurance. For the for the van, well, I'll just keep going. There's a garbage truck here. You might hear it in the background. This is a magnifier because you're getting old, right? And I don't. I wasn't a readers guy. I recently bought a pair of readers, and now I use them. They're actually in my apron here. Uh, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like that I need them. But uh, I waited till 56 years old. So there you go. Uh, but I'm not carrying them on me all the time. And I rarely really need to read small print when I'm out and about. But I found that when I started eating more healthy, uh, I wanted to take this out and look at labels. Uh, and it helped tremendously. <clears throat> you never know. And look, survival situation, you could use this to help you start a fire. Or just burn ants all day if that's uh, your proclivity. And if you're one of those people that wants to burn insects and torture them, you probably also shouldn't be carrying a firearm. <laughs> uh, this was given to me. I don't know why or where I was. City Council. Oh, Cincinnati. I was visiting a friend in uh, Kentucky. And we went across the river there. And like, apparently this Jim Tarbell is some important guy there. And I don't know why this is in here. This doesn't need to be in here. <laughs> oh, hey, there's two Mike Z Design stickers. Should I have an auction or something for you guys, like a giveaway? These are the last two that exist. <laughs> Did not know they were in there. I'm probably just going to stick them on something. Okay, you've seen this, I think. Uh, this is a funny thing. This is the old Lando Lakes box. They used to have this Indian woman on there. And in the old days, uh, it was a full size of her kneeling, and you could see her knees now this little trick here that I'm going to show you is something that was shown to me when I was about eight years old at summer camp by a camp counselor. Uh, he showed us how to make these. So what you do is you you cut open the box here, you cut her knees off, and then you uh, and those are her knees. I'm hoping you can see this in focus. <laughs> This is a very childlike thing to do, okay? <laughs> but that's hysterical. So I had made a bunch of those, and I gave them away to friends. And I just think it's cute and funny and reminds me to keep a childlike mentality. Uh, being able to still think a bit like a kid from time to time or find joy in silliness, uh, it keeps you from becoming an overly serious person. And it gets a giggle from people. I actually have, uh, still, I found them. I think I have, I don't know, five or so of those box fronts still. And I've saved them to make more of these. I just never got around to it. They're all wrapped in packaging tape, so it's waterproof. E even under on the underside, the, the knee part. I did a good job making that. This is a signal mirror. <laughs> I got everything in here, man a metal signal mirror so yeah if I'm stuck somewhere in the van in the middle of nowhere and there's some helicopter flying over you know I've got so many ways to signal it's ridiculous anyway I stuck that in there for some reason I have a vintage Rheingold extra dry bottle opener which I don't need because I'm always carrying oh we'll get to that I didn't even go to my front pocket yet uh, so I got that in there little note to myself, I believe it will happen. I, that was probably on a particular thing. And you know what? It is happening. I got a pretty good life. I'm happy. This is funny. This is a girl I dated years ago. There's a bunch of these little mini things from the Derby Dolls. 
and uh, she's pretty cool pretty cool chick here did not know that that was even in there front pocket front right pocket so I carry two sets of keys uh, most days I have this small little ring here this is for this shop this is how to get into uh, this house here these people that live here and get into the garage and then this is my house key the other set of keys have the clicker on it for my van and that's got uh, keys I need for my apartment and the van and uh, that's pretty much about it so the reason I do that is is oftentimes I'll drive the van here in the morning because I set up the shop and then I go run a couple errands I set up the shop start working then I run an errand or usually or at least go home to lunch and in the afternoon I'll usually ride the bike back and when I do I just want this. I don't need to carry that fat clicker with me everywhere I go. It makes life easier. And Swiss Army knife. Now, I brought this with me today because I was carrying a knife like this or pretty much this, well, it wasn't this exact knife, but one just like it. I started carrying that in high school. Before that, when I was five years old, my dad gave me my first, I was in kindergarten. My dad gave me my first pocket knife. And I remember it being stainless steel and it had two blades, a short one and a long one. And other things, probably had a bottle opener and all that. I wasn't opening bottles at five. But um, I remember specifically that my dad showed me how to whittle, taught me how to whittle safely. And uh, always said, you know, use the small blade for that, save the large blade, you know, cut a piece of fruit or something. But uh, I remember him showing me how to carve into the bark on both sides and peel it up if you wanted to, you know, all that fun stuff that your dad's supposed to show you. And the problem with this, I carried this thing... I collect these, so I've got a whole bunch of them. Uh, but I carried this for years in my front right pocket, and it would always wear a hole through the pocket and through the through the trousers. And I got tired of that. You'll see old pictures of me. You'll see me wearing shorts with a patch right there. That's because this knife was always wearing a hole. And then one day I, I picked one of these up. This is decades ago. And uh, I went, oh, well, you know, this is smarter. So I could carry this in my front pocket, which I do every single day never wears a hole through anything because it's plastic and it's nicely rounded. Um, I always carry a, one of these with a uh, pair of scissors because I'll look at myself in the mirror when I'm driving uh, before I do a video and I might have some crazy wild hair from my mustache or nose hairs, that sort of thing, and or eye, crazy eyebrow or something. And that's a really, and this, by the way, these things will cut just about anything. They're friggin' amazing, amazing, uh, the scissors. And that, I use that a lot. I use uh, this uh, reamer here all. I actually use this. I did a video where I was wearing a pair of Keen sandals. I was hiking. Uh, I was doing the hike, Hollywood sign hike. And I blew out my sandal. Ripped right off. And I had a little piece of paracord on me, which, as you know, paracord has seven inner strands. I took that, I took an inner strand out, and I sewed my sandal back together. I made it all the way to the top and all the way back with no problem. So, actually used it. Uh, if you're wondering, this is really, it's a, this is a throwback. Uh, what this is for, this is for when, it's so crazy that they still even put this on the knife, because I can't think of another use for it. This is for when, it's a little, little hook here. In the old days, you take a package and you wrap it in brown paper and you put like twine around it, and that's what this is for. So you can carry your package. You put that through the twine and carry your package comfortably. I've never used that for anything, but it, you know it has your. I use this. I've used this quite a bit. I prefer this. This is what this is actually the one I use at home. It hangs on a hook above my sink, and and this is how I open all the cans in my when I'm cooking. Usually, it's a tomato sauce uh, or a tomato paste can. Uh, that's, I'm very proficient with that. I prefer this style and rotating the can rather than this style. With this one, you have to re rotate the can this way. You're cutting into the can. And with this one, you're cutting away. So I just, this one I find to be much easier to use faster, makes more sense to me. Uh, but I do use this a lot. Uh, this I use all the time. Again, the, you might run into a beer. Uh, Oftentimes I go out somewhere, I'm hanging out with friends, I visit somebody at their house, we're at a shop location, we're on the road, somebody hands you a beer, and uh, you need a bottle, a bottle opener, so there you go. And obviously it's got a uh, Phillips head, I've used this a few times. There's been times where all I've had is this on me, and I go to meet with somebody in their house, and 
to talk about a job. Let's say we're in the kitchen and I look up and I'll see that their uh, kitchen doors, the, the cabinet doors are out of whack. And I'll go, you mind if I take a look at that? And I'll move it and it's loose because the hinge, the screws backed out of the wood on the frame or if, they're mod if it's modern hardware, uh, there's many adjustments there. So you can make, adjust the cabinet door this way, this way. You can do all these things with it. And I know how to do that. And I can do it right there, right in front of them. And that usually seals the deal, makes people pretty happy. Old doorknobs, the glass style doorknobs. Uh, then you have to use this. this is, that's not as easy with this. But because I have this in my back pocket, boom. Now I can reach, I can get behind the doorknob, uh, put a flat blade on there, and I'm golden. All the time, man. You'd be shocked at how often this comes in handy. Uh, I've started, I keep forgetting which way this closes. I started carrying this leather satchel, as you guys know. There's not much in here, actually, at the moment. But uh, I am throwing this in there now. This is a sharpener. If you're going to carry a blade, you need a way to sharpen it. And this is a nice compact pro one that it works very well. I'm considering sewing uh, some pockets on the inside of this, little slots to keep uh, particular items like this. I take this with me everywhere now. It, uh, it's the Woodsman Pal. You see the logo right there. I branded my logo on this side. And for those of you curious, I know I've mentioned another garbage truck. I know I've mentioned, um, I do, why am I always doing videos on garbage day? I should know better, right? <laughs> I mentioned the leather work. So I've been slowly accumulating the little tools that I didn't have already. And, and I finally got the mat, the self-healing mat to cut on. Uh, I think I'm ready to go. I think I got everything I need now. I got to make a burnisher, which I'm going to do here, which is a piece of scrap wood. And I will make a lot of my own tools for that. But that's coming now. First thing I'm doing is making some NATO, uh, leather NATO uh, watch straps. More like the Zulu, just a single pass. And the big one is going to be this wallet. I'm, I need, I, I'm going to get good at smaller leather craft first with the watch bands. <clears throat> and then I want to reproduce this wallet. The, this is made by Holloway Leathers. I think she's got it on the back here. M, I think it's MK. How, well, let's, put on, let's put on the readers for you. It's... Uh, Custom leather, MK Holloway. Nice gal. Uh, it was a weird situation. I wish I would have thought more before I did this video because she sent me a patch, a leather patch of my logo. When she made this, it was beautiful. And I, I probably had this at least 10 years already, but you can see it's wearing out. And what I didn't like about it right from the beginning was she used two thin pieces of leather and glued them together to create this outer section. I don't think it's a bad idea to use the thinner leather on the inside, right? Because you want to keep your bulk down as much as possible. This is not a super bulky wallet, if you look at that. All right? That's not too bad. And I, you see all the stuff I'm carrying in here. Um, I think I might have fun with this. I don't know. I, what's going to end up happening is I'll probably just cut this apart neatly and use this as my templates dar, to make the new wallet. I am not going to do all the nice, fancy hand tooling that she did on the back side of this. Uh, beautiful and the hand-painted logo. The thing that bummed me out about this person was she had to have a custom stamp made, which is huge, to imprint that on the leather, and then she hand-painted it. And then out of the blue, she sent me a leather patch, and she basically was hitting me up for orders. Like, she wanted me to buy all this stuff from her with my logo on it, I was like, no, I just wanted the wallet. And by the way, I, I gave you X amount of money to do this project, which included the cost of the stamp. Why don't you just give me the stamp? And I've written her since then, and she never even returns the emails. So I don't know what that's about. And I highly doubt she still has the stamp anymore. So that's a real bummer, man. Uh, but she did a great job. She, you know, she produced a decent piece. It's just it wasn't made, and I knew it when I got it. I knew it wasn't heavy duty enough to last me the rest of my life. So when I do my version of this wallet, this outer piece is going to be a, probably veg tan. It's probably a nice thick piece of veg tan on there. That's not going to do this. I was considering cutting this off and stitching a new flap on it. Uh, 
but I don't know if that makes sense because I need it to lay out like this so I can use it as a template. So that's probably smarter. Anyhow, I think that pretty much covers it. I think that pretty much covers it. This is what I, I carry, you know, a nice, decent, uh, you know, folder, good stiff lock. This has a liner lock on it. It's not going to collapse on you. And you can see this is used. I mean, I use it all the time for all. Give me a nice piece of chocolate cake or a nice piece of pie. I'm cutting it with this. So if I'm in a restaurant and I need to cut a steak, I'm cutting it with this. I'm opening boxes with this. I'm doing... I'm <laughs> scraping dog poop off my shoe and I'm cutting my steak with the same <laughs> that's disgusting all right anyhow good enough is that good enough for you I don't know how I'm going to title this one but uh it's my everyday carry it's what I have on me all the time uh, and I think this is your most important thing for everyday carry right there I think that's your most important thing uh, one of the things I do want to start carrying in here is a decent length uh, fixed blade knife just to keep it in there. I think it's a good idea. And I will bring this up real quick. I don't carry this on my person. Um, it's, it's a little too big for me. Uh, but I've decided to start. I've got one in here I was keeping in here already. It's even larger. And the video I saw, and this is true, uh, so it wasn't it. We're still talking. This is a great little self-defense item. I mean, it helps to just look for something. It has an adjustment on it, all right? So I can, if you're looking at the table, and go from a little bit of a pinpoint to a broader. I don't know if that makes a difference when you're looking at it that way. The firearm is a thing that when I'm in the city, if I'm going to the store, that sort of thing, I keep it in my pocket because you never know what's gonna happen. If you keep a firearm in your car, and you're in a store and there's some stupid crazy person in there holding the joint up or shooting people uh, that gun in your car isn't going to help you so if you have it on your person maybe you can help save lives that's the impetus for me behind this it's not uh, I'm not too nervous about somebody jumping me but if they do I've practiced this enough. I can reach in my pocket like, okay, I'll give you my money, pull this out, and it's over. Uh, but if I was in a store situation, or, I mean, a couple years ago, there was a guy on Sunset Boulevard walking down the street just shooting people. It was right up the street from my house by Gower. If I had been there, I probably would have tried taking the guy out. End it. No more people are getting hurt. So this... If you're not a firearms person, I get it. This right here is a very good thing to have on. If you let's say you're going for a walk at dusk or nighttime, you're gonna to walk to the corner store. It's around a corner from your house. That's why they call it a corner store. Yeah, and you're not a firearms guy. Get used to this right here. It's got a button on the back, and you can hold this in your hand while you're walking, right? And somebody comes up to you and they're giving you grief. Boom! You hit them with the light. You can hit him in the face with this. It's got a nice sharp edge. It's that's what basically was designed for. Boom, bam, 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 and run. So uh, that really does blind you. It, you're not seeing it so much in the camera there, but this is a pretty powerful uh, LED light here. So just this, that's just a tip for you. Uh, a lot of people will carry these, but as it is, this is all pretty bulky. Uh, I will say this. I didn't get into this with this. A, I think a revolver is better. In many ways, just it's never going to jam on you. You can carry it around and get all mucked up. It's always going to function. Um, there's always an ongoing argument or you know, lengthy discussion with my friends because I'm friends with a lot of guys that have been SEALs or Rangers or you know MARSOC guys now. They're younger. But, uh, recon guys. A lot of guys have seen combat. And... When we have this discussion, they always want to carry a 9mm, they always want to carry extra magazines, uh, they, oh, they're they still in this mindset of, if I get into a gunfight, you know, I need to have that. They're not wrong, uh, but my mindset's just different. I just think to myself, like, first of all, and I will tell you, I'm not going to give you a bunch of examples, I think I've told some of the stories before, but having this has saved my life before. It has. And um, that's all I'll say about that. But the, uh, the thing is, is usually if you just pull it out and do this, if it's appropriate, that's going to make that person think twice. 
There's also a weird thing I think that happens. Uh, you know that you have it. You don't need to use it. It puts a little extra confidence behind you, behind your eyeballs, I suppose. When there's a potential threat, there's some punk coming up to you and giving you some shit. Uh, and you're like, uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> it gives them, that throws them off a little bit because they're looking for the fear and the shock because then they're going to make their move. You have to control your emotions. But yeah, this right here probably saved, saved, saved the day for you. And uh, that's it. I'm going to leave now. I'll talk to you guys next time. Uh, have a great day. Be kind to one another, right? If you don't live in a big city, you might not feel the need for a lot of this stuff, especially the firearm. But I'm telling you, this is a dangerous place. And I, I, I can't stop talking. This thing here, I only started carrying daily after uh, the, the whole flu thing happened where people were going nuts and they couldn't find toilet paper and all that because I ran into a few incidents that um, put me in, a, in that mindset. The first one was this, he was half naked. Well, he, all he was wearing was a pair of jeans that were barely hanging onto his body. He was barefoot, shirtless, the whole toothless. And he was trying to accost people going into the store. And that set me off. I was like, okay, something's going on here. And I've seen that before, but never this. He was right at the front door. And then a few days later, I went to get gas, and the lines were crazy. And there was this big dude. I can't remember the name of the movie. The, the, well, it doesn't matter. It was a big black guy. Big dude. You know, about 200 pounds or so. Stocky, thick dude. And he was strong-arming people for money. Right out in broad daylight, middle of the day. And people were giving them their money. Everybody pumping gas. And I'm watching this like, this This is crazy. And I see him coming. <clears throat> he comes around the back of the van. He's like, nice van. You should give me this van. And I just... That was it, you know. Like, <laughs> And he, he sized me up, and he just went right to the next person. Now, in that situation, I'm, I, I'm not going to sit there and try to do anything and help these other people... He wasn't actually violent. He was just intimidating. And to me, they were all a bunch of suckers. And I, you know, it's when I went my day. But I saw him do it. I saw him do it to three or four people. Two or three people on this side and this lady right out next to me as I was putting my pump away. And I'm looking at this like, I don't want to actually escalate the thing and go, hey, you know, mouth off and tell him to leave and all that sort of thing. I just, maybe I did the wrong thing there. I don't know. But nobody got hurt. They just lost a few dollars, and I didn't have to hurt anybody, and I went on with my day. So that was a crazy situation. I, almost every day I walk the streets here, or I'm out and about, something kooky happens. There was a comment on one of my videos the other day from when I was in, uh, where I'm going next, and this big, tall, young kid, I'd seen him sitting out in front of this store for a couple weeks, which was weird. I don't know why they just didn't get rid of him. And he came into the store and was mouthing off with this old guy behind me in line. And uh, he actually walked behind me at one point and left. And this old guy was mouthing off back. And I told the old guy to shut up. You're only going to make the situation worse. Clearly, the guy is unstable. But the whole time, I've got this. And I'm thinking to myself, if this goes sideways, I wouldn't have shot anybody. But I remember thinking to myself, I could put that in my hand and whack him in the head because he was much bigger than me <laughs> if I had to. So if you don't live in a, in a major congested city with high crime, uh, what's happening here where I live, you can steal $1,000 worth of stuff and not worry about getting arrested. That's where we're at now. Package theft, assaults, they're way up, way up. Look, look it up. If you don't know, look it up. It's crazy we've had break-ins we have a couple break-ins right here across the street already uh this is an older couple here uh, it's nice that i'm here because there's people casing you see it i know what it looks like when somebody's driving around the road slow and you look at them and that car and those people don't belong here and they're looking around and based on the descriptions of the people that have broken in around here it's the same people <laughs> i'm just gonna leave it at that so they're looking for easy targets and if there's a kind of a strapping dude here who's here every day, 
less likely that they're going to come into this uh, house, hopefully, and try to start any trouble. I'm very nervous for these people. So, I don't know, this is, maybe this video went off the rails, but this is my everyday carry, and I'm kind of talking just to let you know what's going on in my mind about why I carry these things. And just let me reiterate what I said in the beginning. You don't just pick something up like that and start doing it. You need the training, and you need to keep training, and you need to practice, and your body, your hands have to have uh, muscle mem memory. You need to know what you're doing without thinking about it. Um, it just has to be a natural thing. You can't like be putting a whole bunch of thought into something in that moment. You're slightly panicked. You're thinking it out. You're thinking like you're shooting pool. Next step ahead, who else is around here? Is there anybody behind that person? You know, you want to make sure you, if there was a crowded area you're not doing that of course you're a lot less likely to be jumped if that's the case i, I gotta stop talking or this video is going to get crazy it's probably way too long as it is thanks again for being here i hope this doesn't freak a whole bunch of you out <laughs> be good to one another be the change you want to see and uh, i'll catch you in the next one